بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد ایو الاحبہ رحمکم اللہ may Allah have mercy upon us and you امین یا رب العالمین it's imperative that we perfect our prayer because the prayer is the wasila or it is the means and it is the way in which we strengthen that relationship and have that relationship and communication with our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being cautious and knowing the pillars of prayer and the wajibat of this prayer is very important and the shurut meaning the conditions for prayer as well all of those things are very imperative for us to know them understand them and practice them because they are all a part of our prayer they all form our prayer which is our communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we're gonna read a hadith of the Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wasalam which describes for us the seven bones of sujood, the seven places on the body which should be touching the ground or touching the place you're making sujood. Uh, all these seven places should be in contact with the place you're performing your prostration. And this hadith is a hadith of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam umirtu an asjida ala sab'ati a'zun ala jubhati wa ashara bi yadihi ila anfihi wa yadain wa rukbatain wa atraf al-qadamain ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim in this hadith of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have been commanded to prostrate on seven bones. On the forehead, and then he pointed to his nose. On the, my, on the two hands, and the rukbatain, the, the knees, and the edge of the uh, feet, meaning the way you, when you make sujood and your toes are pointing towards the Qibla. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it illustrates for us the way in which we should prostrate. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said in another hadith the, and emphasized the importance of making dua in your, in your, making supplication to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when you're in uh, prostration and that we should prostrate often. And this strengthens your tie with your Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. However, back to this hadith, some of the fawaid that Shaykh Ali Bassam mentioned pertinent to this hadith is one is that it illustrates the obligation and this is the uh, madhab of Imam Ahmed uh, as well that it is an obligation to prostrate on those seven bones and, and they are seven as it is the forehead to, to the nose meaning the nose and the forehead all this area should have contact when you're making sujood it's your two palms, so that makes one, two, three. Your knees, four, five. And your uh, feet, six, seven. And that makes the seven places of sujood, of prostration. And according to the evidence here, it appears that it's an obligation, and this is the madhab of Imam Ahmed, although the fuqaha, they did have some differences about the uh, uh, the obligation for all of those uh, 
body parts, but this is not, not the time or the place to get into that, uh, those differences and to explore that in depth. Another benefit Sheikh Ali Bassam Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned is the, the importance that the enth, the nose, follows with the forehead, letting us know that the nose is considered a part of the face. So in, in, uh, when it comes to wudu, when it comes to you know, making a stanshak, cleaning the nose, that this is a part of your face, and this is a part of the, one of the places of wudu, and it's one of the places of prostration as well. So that the believer, in establishing that communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they should prostrate upon those seven bones, including the nose, and the nose with the uh, forehead. Another benefit of this hadith is the Shaykh mentioned some other benefits related to, for one, that if a person is wearing a garment, for example, I have this hood, and maybe there's mud on the ground or there is uh, excessive heat, that only out of necessity should I use the same garment that I'm wearing to prostrate on. So if I'm wearing an uh, imama or something like that, and I can use part of it in order to protect my face from, you know, out of necessity because it's excessively hot or something like this, then it's permissible. Otherwise, it's not permissible to do that. Uh, another benefit that he mentioned is that the if you're going to place something between you in the earth or, the, or wherever you're making your sujood, that it should be uh, something which is not connected to the body. So unless it's a, a necessity, then it can be connected to the body like this, as we mentioned and illustrated. But if it is not something, uh, for example, if you have a scarf or another garment, and in fact, I just made dhuhr and I used this to pray on. I used this. I didn't have a prayer mat. Sometimes I use a piece of paper or a piece of plastic or a lunch sack, whatever I happen to have to protect me from the elements, maybe from rocks, maybe from grass as I'm allergic, maybe from some other uh, things. And so this shows us the mashru'iyah of that practice as well. And, and, and this is well known as Muslims everywhere around the world. They take pride in, in the sajada, those uh, prayer rugs and so forth. And it is widespread practice. So that being the situation or the case, and that case is when that item is not connected to what you're wearing and, and so forth. And also another benefit the Sheikh mentioned, also it is not permissible uh, to use like for example your hand, to make prostration on your hand or what have you because your hand is a separate bone that should be prostrating because you would be missing this part but you would have only got your hand, uh, been had your hands connecting uh, to the ground or whatever you're prostrating upon. Those are just some of the benefits the Sheikh mentioned and may Allah bless him with genital for those and may Allah bless us with genital for those and forgive us of our sins and bless us with ikhlas, with the bat. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.